Welcome to the Great Man Within podcast, every episode designed to help you discover and live the great man within you. So today, we are talking about one of the greatest movies of all time, Goodwill Hunting. So it's like, it's like Shawshank Redemption in the sense that if I'm, if I'm like flipping through TV listings and one of those two movies comes on, no matter where it is in the movie, whether it's like the first five minutes or the last five minutes or somewhere in between, I'm jumping in and I'm riding the wave to the very end. It's like that good. <laughs> and a few weeks ago, I think it was the very beginning of the COVID era. It was a Friday night, long day. I had my dinner. I'm just sitting down on the couch. I'm like, what's on? And I caught Goodwill Hunting within the first five minutes. I'm like, yes, I'm going to watch this thing all the way through. And I hadn't seen the movie in its entirety probably in three or four years. And just like great movies or great art in particular, like you pick up a new layer of its, of its genius wherever you are at that period in your life. And what I had a chance to witness was what I want to call the goodwill hunting syndrome. And it's based on an archetype of man that I see right now operating in this world unbeknownst to him who is super associated with his mind, his intellect. He's intellectually superior. He's read the books. He's the most informed. He's listened to the podcast. He knows the breaking news. He's got the rational and logical arguments that he can use to disassemble someone else or to beat someone else but he's also the guy that is always on the sidelines of life, never getting into the arena, playing full out because he's afraid. And Will Hunting in this movie, by the way, this is like one big spoiler alert, right? If, and by the way, like I I feel like we've passed the statute of limitations. Like there's gotta be like a 20 year statute of limitations. The movie's been out forever. Like go and freaking see it (laughs) or pause me at this point in time. Uh, Because if you haven't seen it yet, what are you waiting for? It's a classic. Right? Will Hunting, who's played by Matt Damon, is, a, is like a rough street kid who grew up in Southie, Boston, who is an orphan, who's been beaten, passed from one foster home to the next. And the only thing that he's got are his friends like Ben Affleck and a few other rough guys who love to rabble rouse, go out, get drunk, get into fights, chase women, and go to the Red Sox games. Like that's their life. That's his community. And, you know, Will Hunting likes that. And at a certain point, he also knows that he's capable of more, right? He reads an ungodly amount of books. He's got one of those photographic memories, doesn't forget a single word on a single page. He's able to like just crush anybody mathematically, one of the most gifted people in the world, intellectually. And at the same time, he's a janitor at MIT because he wants to be around greatness, but he doesn't want to get in the arena of it. He works in construction and like, you know, knocks down buildings with his boy, Ben Affleck, where at the end of the movie, you know, Affleck is talking about how he's going to be doing this for the next 15, 20 years of his life. And Matt Damon's like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this for the next 15, 20 years as well. And Affleck looks at him and he goes, that's a fucking insult that you with this gift are sitting here like, like swinging a sledgehammer, breaking down old brick, coughing up asbestos, you know, like. This is, this is my lot in life. This is as good as I've gotten. And you wasting this gift and a choice to get out of here, like you, you are like, you're a disgrace to me. You owe it to me to take these gifts and to go out into the arena and to play a bigger game. And one of the pivotal turning points in the movie is, you know, Will Hunting's character ends up meeting the late, great Robin Williams, who's also someone who's a therapist who can see the gift in Will Smith and Will Hunting and can actually reach him on a level that he's never been reached before. But through their union, you know, Will Hunting actually teaches uh, Robin Williams' character that he's playing a smaller game. He's not in the arena the same way that he could be. And one of the things that, uh, that Robin Williams like calls onto the mat, he says, you know, Will, you've read all the books. You can recite some poem. But do you know what it's like to sit and look at the Sistine Chapel and like smell the must in the room to see its beauty. Have you ever even traveled outside of Boston? And Will Hunting had never, right? He's like, you could probably recite some poem about what it's like to be in love, but have you actually ever gone into the arena and open your heart to a place where you could get hurt to feel what love feels like? And Will had never done that. 
Like his romance with Minnie Driver in the movie is something that like he is constantly moving towards but then ejecting from because he's afraid. And he's built this fortress around him to protect himself. And he's done so by sharpening his intellect but shutting off everything else. And I see so many dudes doing this too because it's a safe place to be and we get applauded in our society for being smart, for being witty, for being um, the most well-reasoned to have a, you know, a, like, a, like a carefully crafted argument at any given moment. But I've also seen a lot of guys float around my orbit who are really talented dudes who get close, but they don't ever want to step in and do the inner work. They just are comfortable reading the book or listening to the podcast they're, they're comfortable consuming information without ever stepping into doing inner work with other men, without ever going to a mankind project or to an everyman or to going to a landmark forum or to doing a John Wineland course on intimacy or to joining my mastermind. Like guys are, are so hovering around the arena but never get in it. And it's usually they need a mentor like a Robin Williams character in the Goodwill Hunting movie to wake you up and to say, fellas, like you can live your life consuming the information and sound really good, but there's a few of us who can actually see that you're not playing a big enough game, that you're actually standing outside the arena because there's a fear of being vulnerable. There's a fear in tapping into your emotions that have probably hurt you at some point in time. There's a fear in going to these places that are unbeknownst to you, where you could lose, where you could be rejected. But I believe that a great man is constantly moving towards his edge, who is stepping outside of isolation and doing everything on his own and going into the arena with other men who are doing the inner work, who are sharpening their swords together, who are getting their asses kicked in the arena, like Brene Brown would say. If you're not in, your, if you're not in the arena regularly getting your ass kicked, then I have no interest in your opinion about how I'm living my life. I love her quote on that. And so when I'm seeing the goodwill huntings of the world walking around, sharpening their minds over and over again in isolation, I want to shake them. I want to wake them up. I want to tell them, guys, you're not playing the big game. You're getting a big fat head. But the rest of you, I wouldn't get into a foxhole with you. I wouldn't go... Um, on this journey with you, at least not in the state that you're in right now, because I don't think I can count on you. Like you haven't stepped out from behind the book or from behind the podcast to do the work. So I say that with the ultimate level of compassion and also a calling forward of the men here who are goodwill hunting (laughs) their own lives at the detriment of playing a bigger game. So this is a wake-up call for you. Are you going to consume one more piece of information Read one more book, sign up for one more online course where you're just consuming, or are you going to get into the arena and do the deeper inner work? Whatever that means for you, it's a personal decision. And when you're ready, I'll see you on that path, living the great man within.